The Gulf of Mexico is rich with natural resources. One of the most coveted and costly is oil. Off the Louisiana coast alone, nearly 27 million barrels of crude oil and 131 million barrels of natural gas are produced each year. Mobile offshore drilling units, or MODUs, drill 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These MODUs provide a unique life offshore. They're not just a platform for work. They also become a home away from home. Employees are transported via private helicopter to the mobile oil drilling units for two week stints per month. They live on the rig, sleeping and eating, and of course, working 12 hour shifts each day. Imagine working in an isolated environment out in the Gulf. Now imagine an explosion and fire occurring in the midst of this isolation, fueled by the very oil or gas you've been diligently drilling. This is a volatile and deadly situation. You have only minutes, if that, to escape. It's because of these risks that the Coast Guard Marine Safety Offices inspect oil rigs. The offices in Morgan City, Louisiana, inspects 225 rigs each year. Their efforts have saved countless lives and businesses, not to mention our natural resources. This whole inspection is to make sure that they're operating safe. All of their safety equipment is up to snuff and that's going to perform and do what it actually is supposed to do in the event of an emergency. We're going to be inspecting the drill floor up here for uh, hazardous location inspection. All their electrical equipment either has to be explosion proof, purged and pressurized, or intrinsically safe. We're testing the purge alarms on the stuff up here. We're required to have a general alarm checking and testing the ship's generators, ensuring that all the safety features installed and that all the required equipment by regulations is operating properly. The rigs are required to have lifeboats in case they would have a well blowout or a fire, a ship would collide into the rig. Everybody would come to one of these lifeboats to be able to evacuate the rig. So right now we're checking the equipment in the boat. Uh, they need to have life jackets, water, uh, flashlights, flares, so that they can signal somebody in the case of an emergency so they can get picked up. So we're checking to make sure the lifeboat would operate properly to get them away from the rig and to keep everybody alive until they might be spotted by another make vessel sure or a bad. helicopter. Okay, what we've got here is your list of deficiencies. Coast Guardsmen discuss the discrepancies with the offshore installation manager and inform him of any requirements that he isn't aware of. For everyone's safety, all deficiencies must be corrected within a designated time frame. Now, despite all these precautionary measures and everyone's efforts to correct any deficiencies, the unfortunate fact is accidents still do occur. Timbalier Bay just 90 miles south of New Orleans. Here, during a routine capping of an inactive oil well, the well suffers a blowout and the cutoff valve malfunctions. Uh, oil everywhere. The well is in a, a huge flame. It's very difficult to get close to it. The heat that is radiating from there is uh, melting the um, derrick structure that is around it, and it's starting to collapse. There were cruise quarters on the bars that had caught fire, and there was a lot of plastic burning. Plastic is, is very, very bad to breathe when, when it burns. The plume was blowing directly over our command post, so for a period of time we had to move our command post until the wind shifted in our favor again. There were a number of vessels on scene that had firefighting capabilities, some of the Coast Guard vessels, uh, some civilian vessels. And the whole idea was to bring the temperature down far enough to allow the, the workers to get in close enough to remove this melting mass of metal from the derrick that had crumbled around the wellhead. 
At the same time that we're trying to pump this water on there, there's oil uh, being uh, spewing out into uh, the Gulf. We had the National Strike Force bring in equipment uh, from various locations across the country that would include the uh, open water oil containment and recovery system, uh, a huge boom system that uh, is designed to be out in, in ocean water and collect uh, oil. We had several types of pumps and uh, skimming uh, equipment that then would be able to uh, pump the collected oil into uh, waiting tanks and, and barges. Finally, after 11 days of firefighting and with seven tugboats pulling on the damaged barge, the barge is removed from the site. 36 hours later, the flames are extinguished, but the work of the Coast Guard is hardly over. Once the oil was cleaned up out of the environment, another huge undertaking was just getting the equipment that we used clean. People had to grab the equipment haul it on board, scrub it down, get it packed away in the proper uh, containment boxes, uh, all in the, the terrible heat of the Gulf area. Uh, it was a, a huge job, that it was just as messy as can be with all this oiled equipment. It was something that uh, no one was happy to be doing, but extremely happy to be doing it because it meant the end of the cleanup. By the time the case was finally closed, over 370 people had been involved in deploying over 13,000 feet of boom to help contain and collect the oil. And many more cooperated in the firefighting and final cleanup.